The executive branch executes laws. Thus, it carries out and enforces the laws once Congress has passed them. The framers thought it would be good for the American people to have one person appointed to represent and speak on behalf of the nation. This person would be called the president, and the president would be the main component of the executive branch. The Constitution places all the responsibility for the executive branch on the shoulders of the president. That's a lot of pressure. The president is elected to a four-year term through a system known as the Electoral College. To win an election, a candidate must receive a majority of electoral votes cast by the states. If no candidate wins such a majority, the House of Representatives decides who becomes president, and the Senate decides who becomes vice president. Compared to the distinct and well-laid-out powers of the legislature, the powers of the president started out rather vague. The framers of the Constitution did this purposely because they did not want one man having too much authority within an entire government. This makes sense, of course. But over the years, the president and the executive branch have indeed gained and expanded on powers that the framers did not originally hand out. Let's take a look at the role of president. The president is the chief executive or chief administrator of the United States. His job is to manage all of the people who work in the executive branch and to make sure the laws of the nation are enforced. He also holds the title Chief of State, which means he's the foremost diplomat of the nation. In this capacity, he performs ceremonial duties and meets with the leaders of foreign nations. In addition to his executive responsibilities, the president has certain legislative and judicial powers. More than any other person, he is responsible for suggesting legislation to Congress that he feels will improve the State of the Union. He also works closely with congressional leaders to see that his ideas are carefully considered. The President may also veto legislation that he feels should not become law. The President also holds certain judicial powers. He recommends candidates for the position of Attorney General, who heads up the Department of Justice. He nominates Supreme Court Justices, Federal Court Justices, and U.S. District Attorneys whenever there are vacancies. And except in cases involving impeachment of government officials, he has the power to pardon criminals. <coughs> you are pardoned. Thank you. You're welcome. In addition to these duties, the President is also the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Armed Forces. The fact that the armed forces in the United States are led by the President, who is a civilian and not a military officer, is an important aspect of the American government. It guarantees democratic control over this enormously powerful organization within the government. As head of the diplomatic corps, the president can make treaties with foreign countries, appoint U.S. ambassadors, and receive foreign ambassadors and heads of state. He also gets to travel all over the world on the government's tab. But just as every self-respecting superhero has a sidekick, the president is assisted by a large number of close associates and advisors whom he appoints to head up the various executive departments, bureaus, offices, and agencies. He has help from the vice president, of course, and the executive office of the president, a team of the president's closest advisors. There's also the cabinet, which is the formal body of presidential advisors who had 14 departments within the American government. Such departments include the Treasury Department, the Agricultural Department, Defense Department, and the State Department. All those people make up the executive branch and the President's little, well, big family. Altogether, the approximately three million civilians and two million military personnel who work in the executive branch are called the President's administration. That sums up the executive branch. To watch more free educational videos, visit our website, studioforlearning.tv. Stretch your brain online.